It's Monday, folks. You know what that means. Hello everyone, Jeremy here, and welcome back to another episode of Manship Monday. If you're one of my bearded brethren out there, you've probably noticed that with the increase of beard popularity, there is also a huge influx in beard products. Frankly, just a mind-numbing amount of beard products. You've got your beard oils, you've got your beard butters, you've got your beard balms, you've got your mustache waxes, and that's not to mention the conditioners and the cleaners and the combs and the... I've even seen now they have like heated combs for... Point is, there is a ton of crap on the market for beards and it can get really confusing. So today we're gonna focus on oils, balms, and butters. We're gonna try to kind of clarify the differences a little bit, put a little structure around what the different purposes are for the different products. So let's start with the OG, the original gangster, beard oil. Beard oil has been around for a long time. It was one of the first beard products I used as I started to grow my beard out. I feel like beard oil is kind of like your base layer. It's your most basic beard care product. If you're only gonna use one beard care product, beard oil should be the one. It's also one of the least confusing of the three we're talking about today. There's not a lot of confusion. It says it in what it is. It's oil. The main purpose of beard oil is to provide some moisture and nutrients to your hair and skin. It also acts as a conditioner to help detangle, soften, cut down on the frizz a little bit. It also provides a little protection from drying out your hair from the cold or if you're blow drying when you're styling your beard. It's light, it keeps your beard feeling kind of soft and a little more natural of a feel to it. And it has really no hold properties whatsoever. You're not gonna get any styling or hold capability out of beard oil. If you noticed, I did say hair and skin earlier, and that's because beard oil is really good for your skin also. That's why it's kind of important when you're putting in beard oil to make sure you work it in there and get it down to your skin level. The oil is really going to help your skin stay moisturized and hydrated. It's going to cut down on that dreaded flaky skin that a lot of people get when they're growing a beard or have a beard, or as I call it, beard drift. No one wants to roll around looking like they ate a whole box of saltine crackers and don't know how to chew with their mouth closed with just crap all over their shirt and in their beard. That, that's just, that's not a good look. And beard oil can really help or completely prevent that issue. Beard oil is great for all lengths of beards. Even your newbies that are just now starting to grow their beards out and you're going through that dreaded itchy phase we've all had to deal with where you're just scratching and you're rolling around all day you're scratching like a dog with mange it's horrible that actually leads a lot of guys to never make it to growing their beard out because the itchy phase drives them crazy and they just shave it all off which is a crime against humanity i might add beard oil is equally as important for guys with medium length and long beards like me if you've got a long beard the very ends down here that's a long way from your face and it's really hard for your natural body oils to get down and moisturize that so giving it a little help and putting some added moisture nutrition really helps cut down on those dry and split ends. Using oil for hair is nothing new. People have been using this, the Greeks and the Egyptians, and people have been using this since the beginning of time. Beard oil is a time-tested, tried and true product. Now, some people have told me, yeah, Jeremy, I'm not buying all that expensive beard oil. I just like to use straight coconut oil or argan oil or, or whatever your oil of choice is. And, and that's absolutely a possibility. And if that works for you, then great, roll with that. I personally prefer a blend of several oils because all the different oils actually have different nutrition properties, different benefits to them. They help hair in different ways. So I like a blend of oils to kind of get the best results possible. And most quality beard oils are just that. They should just be all natural oils, maybe like some coconut oil, some argan oil, maybe some sweet almond oil, avocado oil, some mixture of these oils. There are a few others out there, but those are the main ones you normally see. Maybe some fragrance or some essential oils to get it smelling good, to keep that beard smelling so fresh and so clean. And that's basically it. There shouldn't be a whole bunch of other crap in the beard oil. If there is a bunch of other ingredients, you probably wanna try another brand. Just to mention a few of the brands that I use or have used in the past, and they have good quality ingredients. You've got your Portland Beard Company, Fresh Beards, uh, you know, of course your beard brand is really well known, uh, Artius Man, those are, that's a really great beard oil. And that's just to mention a few. There is a bunch of them out there. Just do your research, make sure they've got good ingredients and see what works best for you. But for you guys that like to experiment, you can make your own beard oil. You can definitely go on 
one like Amazon or something and you can buy your almond oils and your argon oils and your coconut oils, whatever oils you wanna try out and make your own. Maybe add some essential oils or some fragrances to give it the scent you want and definitely experiment around and try to make your own. That's a really economical way of doing it and sometimes you can really whip up something that's great. Now moving on to the more confusing stuff and this is where shit starts to get a little weird balms and butters. The problem with balms and butters is there aren't any rules or guidelines or regulations or anything to specify what constitutes something is a balm or a butter. Like in whiskey, for instance, for something to be a bourbon, it has to be produced in the U.S., have a mash bill with at least 51% corn, distilled no higher than 160 proof, aged in a new charred oak barrel at no higher than 120 proof, and be at least 80 proof when bottled. These are clear standards that make it very easy to specify this is what a bourbon is. With bombs and butters, there's no such thing. Crap is all over the place. Some butters are super smooth and creamy, almost like a lotion-y kind of consistency. They offer no hold whatsoever, have no wax in them in any way. Some do contain wax, they're a little stiffer and they do offer a little bit of hold. Some balms are considered conditioning balms and they have little to no wax and don't really offer much if any hold and are really soft and light in your beard. Other balms have a ton of wax in them and they're much, much stiffer. They offer a ton of hold and they kind of really weigh things down. There's also a lot of overlap in the two categories, which further kind of confuses things and things start to get a little intermingled. So today I'm gonna to do some generalizations here. So caveat, there's gonna be some swings in these categories, but I'm gonna to try to get down some base generalities in these things, to kind of help clarify some of the differences between the two. Butters are usually made of the same oils you're gonna find in beard oil, but with some butters added, like some mango butter or some shea butter, to kind of give them that thicker, creamier, or pasty kind of consistency. Butters generally don't have wax, or if they do, it's generally lower on the ingredients because there's a lot less of it. Butters aren't gonna normally give you a lot of hold. They're gonna give you a little more hold than say a beard oil, but not much to speak of. It's generally gonna leave your beard feeling kind of natural and light, uh, and just really kind of help kind of maintain things and keep the frizz down a little and also work as kind of a long-lasting conditioner. Butters are also great for everyday use. They're generally not gonna leave a lot of buildup or anything on your beard. Some guys like to use the butters by themselves. Others prefer to use the oil with the butter, putting the oil on first, cause you can really get down at your skin good with that stuff, and then maybe adding some butter at the end just to kind of help add a little bit of control and help with some of the flyaways. So to help kind of clarify this category a little bit, I do have some examples uh, in the balm and butter category. Uh, for a butter, I have this beard butter from Fresh Beards. And by the way, really good stuff. You can tell I've already used quite a bit of it because I really like this stuff. It smells really good. If you like cologne scents, this black light, phenomenal, really, really good scent, this stuff. I love the way this stuff smells, but this is a really good one. They also have cool merch. They have really nice hats, stuff like that. They have a really cool logo, that little beard thing with the man sign. I think it's pretty, pretty dope, right? I like it. I always like to put the stickers on the Yeti. But anyway, this is an example of a butter that has no wax. It only has natural oils like coconut oil, avocado oil, and a few others, and shea butter. No beeswax at all in this one. Still has a firmer consistency than some of the lotion-y butters I've seen, but it's still a very, very smooth texture. It emulsifies easily in the hands and applies to your beard almost like beard oil at that point. It has a little more hold than oil alone, but it's gonna hang in there a little longer because of the butters and, and kind of slowly absorb into your beard throughout the day and provide longer lasting conditioning. It leaves your beard feeling super light and natural and has no sheen to it whatsoever. Now switching over to balms. Balms are similar to butters. They are a combination of natural oils, with butters and waxes mixed in to thicken them up. Balms are higher on the hold scale than butters, so if you were categorizing hold, oils would be at the very bottom, basically no hold whatsoever. Then your butters are gonna be a little above that, a little bit of hold, but not much. And then your balms is where you start to get varying degrees of actual hold to help style your beard and hold it in place. The main difference in the balms and butters is really the wax. There's generally way more wax in balms than there is in butters, which is what helps beef up that kind of hold property. But there's a huge swing in hold in this particular category. It's really gonna depend on how much wax is in the particular balm you're using. Easiest way to judge how much hold and how stiff a balm is gonna be is to look at your ingredients 
ingredients and see where that wax falls in the ingredients list. The higher up and closer to the first ingredient the wax is, the stiffer and firmer it's gonna be. The lower down to the bottom it is, the looser and less hold it's gonna have. They're gonna leave your beard not feeling as natural. It's gonna be a little bit of a stiffer kind of feel, but they're gonna have a lot more hold for if you've got some wild craziness going on that you're really trying to tame down. Maybe you're going out for dinner at night or you're going out somewhere during the day where you need to look a little more presentable. Balms in general are a little bit better at kind of keeping that beard looking a little more sleek and maintained. Balms are definitely okay for everyday use, depending on the type of balm you're using. If you got one that has a ton of wax in it, I would maybe go a little easy and try not to use it every day. If you're not washing your beard every day, which you really probably shouldn't be, because that dries your beard out, we've talked about that in a previous video, then the wax can kind of build up a little bit in there. It's beeswax, it's a natural product, and when you wash your beard, all that should come right out. But if you're not washing it day to day and you're using beard balms with a lot of wax in them constantly, it can kind of get a little bit of a heavy, stiff feel to it that I don't personally like. Now, a good example of the variation in balms is Beard Brand, actually, because they actually have two totally different balms. The one I have here is their Utility Balm which has wax, but it's very low on the ingredients, so it has a lighter hold. It's smoother consistency. It leaves your beard feeling pretty much natural, much like a butter would. Now, a couple quick side notes on Beard Brand. A lot of you, I know, are gonna say, this stuff's really expensive, and it is a little high. It's, it's priced a lot higher than a lot of other similar products on the market, but it is considered kind of a premium beard care product, and if you've ever smelled Old Money or Temple Smoke, either one, I mean, come on, man. They smell great. And secondly, this stuff is also really great as a moisturizer for your skin. And the same for this stuff from Fresh Beards, uh, for that matter, their beard butter. The oils and things are also, like we mentioned earlier, really good for your skin. So I use this stuff on my elbows, on tattoos to brighten them up a little bit. Usually when I get done after I put it in my beard, there's some left over on my hands. I always kind of rub it on my arms and stuff and elbows, knees, tattoos, stuff like that. It's really great moisturizer. But back to the dichotomy of beard balms. Ooh. Dichotomy, I'm crushing that vocab with that one. On the other hand, Beard Brand offers a styling balm, which I unfortunately don't have any here to show you, but lanolin wax is like the first or second ingredient if that's in that stuff, if I'm remembering correctly. That is gonna be a very different thing altogether. It's gonna be a much thicker consistency. You're gonna have to work a little more to get it emulsified in your hands and to apply it to your beard. It's gonna have a lot more hold to it than your balms or butters. It's gonna leave your beard feeling a little stiffer and it's gonna have a lot more shine. And just to cover all my bases, for the sake of thoroughness, we got one that's kind of a middle of the road. Uh, this is a beard balm from Artius Man. If you've, if you've never tried this company, give them a try. They have some great beard products. This one, the wax is dead in the middle. So it's gonna have more hold than the utility balm where the wax was really low, but less hold than the one where it was at the top. So like I said, you just have to read your ingredients, kind of see where that wax is in the ingredients list. And that should kind of give you a good kind of general gauge of kind of the firmness and hold that the product's gonna offer. And another side note, because I have to go off the rails 25 times in every video, and be long-winded. It wouldn't be one of my videos as it wasn't. You guys love to let me know how long-winded I am in the comments all the time. Appreciate you. But anyway, this company also makes a really great beard oil. Their beard oil is super thick. It's way thicker than any of the other beard oils I've used. And it really does kind of, I don't know, it gives my beard a, a super silky kind of feel that I really like. It's good stuff. So maybe try that stuff out. So what have we learned today? We can now definitively say we know the difference between oil, balm, and butter, right? Clear as mud, right? Yeah, probably not. It really is tough to separate these categories. The oil, not so much, that's pretty cut and dry. But when you start getting into your balm and butters, there really is so much overlap in those categories that it is really hard to define a like hard line in the sand to differentiate the two from each other. But hopefully we gave you enough information in this video that at least it kind of clears it up a little. After all is said and done, everybody's beard is really way, way different. Your hair is gonna react to different types of oils and butters and stuff differently. And the best thing to do is get out there, try a bunch of these products, mix and match, experiment, try to make some of your own, combine them together, you know, just see whatever it is that makes your beard the best beard that it can be. All right, guys, so that's it. Another man shit Monday in the books. Uh, as always, I'll link all the products we talked about today so it's something you're interested in kind of researching or purchasing, you know where to find them. I hope you found some of the information in this video useful and you enjoyed hanging out with me for a little while today. If you did, feel free to smash that like button. That always helps us out. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. I hope all of you have a great week. Keep those beards growing and we'll see you in the next video.